afternoon, beautiful people. My name is Derek Standifer, and I have the honor, the privilege, and the pleasure of interviewing Ryan Osley. She is a candidate for the Florida State Senate. Ms. Osley, we see you working hard right now, traveling right now, uh, doing the last campaign. How are you doing? I'm doing great, and it's great. It's great to be here. I'm sorry I don't look my greatest, but this is what you get today. And uh, like I said, that's how you, that's how you're supposed to look when you're working hard and you are uh, finishing up the last thing of this race. Uh, so we appreciate you for, uh, for giving us your time. And your um, question one, question one. Um, so the people who are new to new to you and the last people are voting. Um, what is your goal as a Florida State Senate? So I've you know I've served in the Florida House for twelve years and. Um, in that time, I've been a, a champion for children. I fought hard for state employees and for um, just for working people. And I want to continue that service in the Florida Senate. Um, you know, it's a the, the Senate is a is a much is a I believe it's a place where you can um, smaller and and a little bit more collegial than the House. And I've been able to do good things in the in in the House, but I'm looking forward to doing great things for all of Senate District 3 in the Florida Senate. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So um, here on Solving Sundays, uh, we just propose solving the Rubik's Cube, to solving the five steps of life, and in your case, the five steps of your campaign. So belief is uh, step number one of solving the Rubik's Cube. A lot of people pick up the Rubik's Cube. They don't have the belief they can solve it. And I'm so grateful that you have picked up the belief that you can serve in that role as, a, as an effective senator. For the Florida. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. All right. Um, step two of solving the root issue, but step two of solving life is to uh, solve your cross. Now, solving your cross is to identify your why, your reasons. Um, so, um, what do you? Why is this goal? What are your? What are your reasons for running the state senator, and uh, why are you pushing to accomplish these things? So, I am a you know I'm an attorney. I'm a mom, um, but I really believe believe in public service. Uh, I believe that government plays a very important role in our lives. And I just have, have spent my life trying to um, be, a, a, you know, a, in a place where I can do the, be, the, the most good. Um, so, so much of being in the legislature is about more than the actual passing laws or stopping bad laws. We, you know, it gives me a platform where I can be a community leader and convene. I've done some great work um, that I'm really proud of um, in neighborhood revitalization in South City and um, creating Whole Child Leon, which is a nonprofit that helps every single family with young children get their kids off to a good start in life. So I just, I believe that um, being in public office is something that is, um, that I'm well suited for. I enjoy mm -hmm. it. And I um and I and I'm I really am looking forward to continuing the service uh, so that I can still wake up every day and uh, make the world a better place. Uh, you glow when you speak about the work that you do. So thank you for that. We can tell where your heart is and where your passion is. Uh, Some of it has and... to do with the light coming from the car. I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Cool. Um. Now, step three of solving the Rubik's cube is to fill in the corners. Now, filling in the corners is a metaphor for um, placing positive people in your life who will support you and motivate you to be the best version of yourself. Now, when I was doing research on you, I am uh, I was awed that you were endorsed by President Barack Obama. Um, so shout out to that. That's a shameless plug. But what kind of environment would you like to create um, in your position as a senator for, for Florida? Well, I I think one of the 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 biggest problems that we're facing right now is the is the negativity and the divisiveness that's frankly being um I, you know I, I had the privilege today of um participating on the program with dr jill biden and in that mm -hmm. in my remarks i talked about how i'm spending a lot of time because i really can't watch tv or spend too much time on social media right now because it's too stressful so i'm Really, I'm kind of looping President Obama's speeches, and we're lucky that he's back on the campaign trail. And in you know, in those, I'm sure you know, if anyone is an Obama um, supporter and friend like I am, you, you've been watching them as well. But he's talk he talks about how we're almost numb right now to the these the lies. Mm -hmm. Okay, there I am. 
Um, can you still hear me, Derek? Yes, ma'am. We're still good. We're good. Still there. Okay. Okay. So President Obama talking about how we're multiple lies a day from the president of the United States and how that emboldens other people to be divisive and mean and racist. And how does this impact our children? Um, so I, you know, I think my goal is to bring back common decency and civility. And I've, I, I have been successful as a Democrat in a Republican-led legislature and getting things done by, by finding out what's important to everyone and finding that common ground. And I, um, I, that I think that should be all of our goal is to move our country forward by building bridges instead of tearing, tearing others down. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. For that. Thank, you. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your, your fight in the fight for a good cause. We appreciate that greatly. Um, step four of solving the Rubik's Cube is to take it to the next level. Now, if you can see taking it to the next level, to solve the second row. We're, all, we're two thirds of the way done with solving our Rubik's Cube. And the better of life um, is getting better, growing. Um, and you can see a lot of this on your platform, but what are specific ways do you want to support and grow, develop and get better? I'd miss that question. Can said, you tell um, me? Can you say that? I said, um, uh, it, so the, the fourth step is taking us to the next level uh, means to get better, to grow, and to develop. So what are ways, what are specific ways do you want to see Florida grow and develop and get better? You mentioned, you mentioned something already. What are some other ways that you want to see Florida grow and develop and get better? So I, two of the things that I think are, are really, that have become much more apparent during COVID, but have always been issues that are very important to me, are access to child care mm. and access to, to everyone needs to have internet high speed internet access. Um, and I think the way we grow Flora in the right way is that we equip every person in our state with the ability to be online because kids aren't right now, kids, kids that don't have, you know, high speed internet access, don't have access to school. Their families don't, their parents don't have access to healthcare or be able to do jobs remotely. And I believe people are going to, going to want to move to rural Florida to get out of big cities after COVID. And if we don't have high internet, high speed internet in our in these smaller rural communities, nope, that is not going to be an option. So I think the way we, we grow is to make sure that every kid has access to quality early learning at a, no matter their zip code, and we focus on a true really bridging the digital divide so that every single person has access to the internet. And since COVID has happened, you've seen, you've seen kids, they, they've had to go to restaurants to get on the Wi-Fi to access their school work. That is complete. And we need to make sure they have a uh, resource for success in their school, especially during, this, uh, during the time that we're in the where children are uh, attending school remotely. Uh, right. <clears throat> um, Ashley Smith, She's in the, she has um, endorsed you. She says, absolutely, Representative Osley. So thank you for that shout out. Thank you for that pub and endorsement. Now, fifth and the final step of solving the Rubik's Cube um, is to, uh, to see the bigger picture. Now, seeing the bigger picture simply means to keep your commitment to your commitments. So uh, future Senator Osley, how do you plan on keeping your commitment to your commitments? Well, I think the most important thing that a senator from a district that includes 11 counties can do to commit mm. to keep my commitments my commitments is to keep listening to the people uh, the people who elected me regardless of whether they voted for me um it is it, you know we are in some challenging times people are hurting people we have an unemployment system that's broken um and i think but but we don't know how to fix things if we don't know they're broken and listening to the people is how we do that and you know, I, I hope your listeners know that, that, you know, our jobs as members of the legislature go way beyond the, you know, the passage of laws. I mean, we have constituent services. We are and my I pride myself on the work that my office does in helping people solve their, you know, problems with government, whether it's the unemployment system or child support. Um, so to me, that's keeping my commitments is making sure that every day we are, are, are answering the call, listening on the ground and, and, and doing our best to help people. Thank you for that. Um, I think one of the most important qualities of our candidates um, and our service, our leaders, is to serve by being in the community and knowing what the community want, regardless if they vote for you or not. You mentioned a great point by saying, I'm supporting everyone, regardless if you, had, if you supported me or not, I'm for the 
not one side of the people that's twice the mentality that our current administration has. Thank you for eradicating a good thing. Now, um, we have officially solved our <laughs> um, So your platform, um, I'm a supporter. I'm, a, I'm, I'm endorsing you, good ma'am. Um, and we wish you a much, much success in the last leg of your campaign. So good luck, Senator Osley. Well, future thank you so much. And that's that's amazing. I, I You did that so quickly. But thank you so much for the opportunity. And I'm um, sorry it's so jointed, but um, but I loved it. So let's do it again. Let's do it again. And uh, I think the beauty of the fact that we're interviewing you while you're working, you're traveling, you're, you're, <laughs> you're put on the ground right now. And we need to see candidates at work. Uh, well, it's Jerome. Jerome, he deserves some credit too. <laughs> thank you for thank you for everything. Um, I've spoken with Jerome. He set up everything, so we appreciate that. Um, yeah. right. Ashley says these are unprecedented times. Um, are calling for violent voices to push for change for their uh, constituent bases. COVID nineteen is a true call for public service, and we think you have answered that call. Um, thank you. Good film. Y'all be great like the lakes. Y'all be blessed like a sneeze. Peace and enjoy the rest of the campaign. Good film. Thank you so much.